Hey y'all, I'm Fran with the developer relations team here at WP Engine. And in this video, I'm going to walk y'all through the latest updates in Atlas, the hosting solution for headless WordPress by WP Engine. But before we jump into the user interface and all the developer features, let's discuss what Atlas actually is. Now, Atlas is a hosting platform for headless WordPress that consists of three main layers all tuned to work together to provide the best hosting experience for headless WordPress sites. It's got a global edge CDN, an auto scaling Node.js container running your framework code, and a WordPress install using GraphQL and REST APIs. Not only that, but it's developer focused with features such as Git push to deploy from your choice of GitHub, Bitbucket, and GitLab. You can create preview environments from pull requests and you can also rebuild your application using webhooks or roll back to a previous version with one click, which are all developer necessities when building headless WordPress sites. Now, let's jump right into the user interface and some of the features, shall we? For those of you who do not have a WP Engine account, really quick before I get into the features in the user interface, you can navigate to developers.wpengine.com slash docs slash atlas slash overview. And in this purple call to action block here, you can try Atlas for free. So when you click on it, it sh will take you to this checkout page here where it tells you to fill out your account information. You do not need a credit card. This is a free sandbox account and you can have a WP Engine account and try Atlas for free. I'm in my WP Engine account and on the left hand side of the hamburger menu here we have the Atlas option. I've already clicked on it and now we can see that it shows that hey this is our Atlas headless WordPress hosting. On the two cards here you could choose from we have start with a blueprint and pull from repository. Now just to show you if you get click started with the blueprint there's just a bunch of boilerplate scaffolding blueprints that you can choose from from e-commerce to regular blog posts to regular WordPress sites. So um, you can take a look at that but we're going to do um, one from our repository and if I click get started here it will pull up all the repositories supported by Atlas, which are the major ones, GitHub, Bitbucket, and GitLab. I've already connected to my GitHub repository, so let's select one from there, and we're going to go for the Next.js 13 headless WordPress example here. Okay, we're going to hit continue, and then I'm going to pick US Central because that's where I'm from as far as the region for the servers are concerned. So continue there. And then we're just going to name this main for the app environment. The root directory is the forward slash dot forward slash, excuse me. And then we can just call this main as well. I already have my WordPress instance spun up. We're going to go with the smart cache uh, environment production server. And I'm going to on purpose not add environment variables to show you some of the features on error and debugging and logging in Atlas. So if I create the app here, Atlas starts to pull down the containers, run the code, and start to build the application. Now, the status shows a uh, failed symbol right here, and then it tells me that, hey, your build has failed, Fran. So if I scroll up and see the last deployment card here, we can have a link that goes right to the build logs. And when we go to the build logs, it tells you the exact overview of the status, when it was triggered, any commit message, commit hashes, um, the dates and the duration. And then you can actually go into the output of the build log and why it failed. Now, I know why it failed because I did not put the environment variable linked to my WordPress backend. But um, this tells you exactly what you would need to know when you are going through this build process in Atlas. Now that we understand why our build has failed, and in this case, it's the environment variables, we can simply scroll up and let's get this app 
up and running. I'm gonna go up here and click back to main to get to the main page of the application. And then we have our variables card here with a hyperlink and we're gonna to go to variables and this will allow us to insert our environment variables. So the key on this one is the next public GraphQL endpoint. So I'm gonna to go to my Visual Studio Code, copy that key right here like so. And then the value is that URL. So let's do that. Copy that URL. Okay, and I'm gonna just have this on by default, hide all variables for privacy. We're gonna save that, save all variables. Okay, and we have a success message saying environment variable changes have been saved. Now, let's go back and redeploy this application. What we can do is simply go to the right hand corner of the screen here that says quick actions. This initiates a drop down menu when clicked on and let's do a clean rebuild here of the app. Here's the app starting to be built. Stoked. It says live success. Now the app is live. And now we have a URL to click on within the environment details card to go to the internet and web and see this live on the web. So let's do it. Let's click on this. And here's our application. Nice. And let's click around to make sure it works. Awesome. This is what we needed. Now that we have our application and site live on the internet with the URL default that Atlas gives us, if you would like, just to show you here in the domains card, if you click on the hyperlink, go to domains, it has all the information you need with a C name, a record, and the input box that you need to provide for your custom URL on wherever your um, domain name is hosted. Now let's go back to the main page here and then go over the rest of the new features in Atlas. Down here, we have runtime logs and um, we have no runtime errors or anything like that on the app, but they will show if you do when you click show logs. And then the other cool thing that's new is the access logs. And these contain all the records and requests made to the website that pass through the CDN. This helps you identify things like malicious activity, resolve issues related to website availability and all the functionality, et cetera. So this is real easy. If we go to, um, if you pick a start and end date right here, for example, let's just pick uh, today and then let's uh, pick an hour and we'll go here, same date to 2 p.m. And then we request logs. It says access logs requested. And what it is, is it sends a email to you. And when you go to your email account, you have access logs retrieved. And then it has a .csv file that you can just download. And then when you click, it'll show you all the uh, logs for uh, your application. Let's open it up here and there it is. Awesome. Next, let's take a look at the redeploy to previous version feature. So for instance, say you have a mistake that you pushed to the main production branch and it's live on the internet and you're like, oops, that wasn't what I wanted to do. And you need to roll back or, and redeploy the previous version. Um, you simply do this. So check this out. We're gonna go into our Visual Studio code. Let's just make a change to the nav bar here and put three exclamation points. We're gonna save that and then we're gonna push this into main. Okay. Now we're gonna push this up. 
and this will trigger a build in at list since it's connected to my repo there's the commit that's triggering a build okay now this new push is live and when we go to the url let's refresh it and it should have three there it is there's three exclamation points that i changed now if you made a mistake and you do not want that you noticed how a redeploy option here with a link hyperlink populated that was the recent version that you had before this latest one that you made a mistake in so if i push redeploy it's going to ask me are you sure and i'm sure and we're going to redeploy this and then it triggers a rebuild version without the mistake so to speak now notice how the live symbol here moved down to the version without the mistake versus the one that has the mistake and you can actually redeploy that too but let's just make sure it actually worked so if we click on the live url on the internet there it did work no exclamation points stoked the last thing i want to go over with you on the new atlas features is the smart search bar that you have when you click on the main your main atlas page i only have one application here but if you had several, you can search by apps, domains, or environments, and it will populate the application via whatever you wanted to search by. And then one more thing, not a new feature, but don't forget there are preview environments where if you have a feature branch that you want to test things on before pushing to production and you check out a feature branch and push that up, it will populate a preview environment of that feature branch that is live and you can pass between your team to see the live updates and a live website on the internet. I hope this video was helpful to understand the new features of Atlas, the headless WordPress hosting platform by WP Engine. Again, I'm Fran with the developer relations team here at WP Engine. Always stoked to hear your feedback. Hit us up in Discord and until then, happy coding.